As the coronavirus pandemic persists with no end in sight, it's taking a crushing economic toll on a large number of Americans struggling to keep a roof over their heads. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. And I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. A new study finds nearly a third of families could not afford to fully pay their rent or mortgage this month. This, as California's Judicial Council had eyed a move this week to lift the statewide moratorium on evictions early. News 8's Richard Allen has more on that and which Californians could be most seriously impacted. Well, that's right. This nationwide study is alarming, finding that in June, 30% of respondents were unable to make their full housing payment, just 1% less than the month before. There's a huge number of people out there who are struggling to make their housing payments. Rob Warnock is research analyst with Apartment List, which is conducting this ongoing study. It finds that among homeowners, 26% are concerned about foreclosure. And among renters, the outlook is even more bleak. 37% said that they were at least somewhat concerned that an eviction would be forthcoming in the next half of a year. Currently, a moratorium on eviction statewide remains in effect. On Wednesday, California's Judicial Council had been considering a move to lift that moratorium in August, instead of waiting until 90 days after Governor Newsom's state of emergency order is lifted. While the council ultimately decided to delay making a decision, tenants' rights groups and legal experts are still watching the case closely. They say that persons of color would be disproportionately impacted. If we are going to allow the courts to reopen and evictions to um, start up again, the people who are going to be most harmed are the very people who are out on the streets right now asking for greater equality in our society. It's a truly terrifying thought that evictions can start taking place uh, you know, a lot sooner than anticipated. Rafael Bautista leads San Diego Tenants Union, which has led local protests against apartment owners who are not working with tenants struggling to make their rent. About 10 to 15 percent of landlords are not trying to work with tenants. They're trying to intimidate them, trying to pressure them into paying whatever they have. Uh, money they're surviving on. Bautista, who is calling for a rent strike, a cancellation of rent, is concerned that once the moratorium is eventually lifted, more families will have nowhere to turn but the streets. If there's a massive wave of, of evictions taking place, we, we know that uh, based on studies, that there's going to be a severe spike in, in homelessness. And if you'd like to take a look at the full report, just go to CBS8.com and click on the help button. Back to you. Evacuation orders have been lifted for a fire in the East County. Flames broke out early this afternoon on Skyline Truck Trail in Lawson Valley. Multiple helicopters made water drops, which helped give ground crews a chance to stop further spread. It burned about 100 acres in rough terrain before crews got a handle on it. The area can be a dangerous environment to live in and fight fires in, but fortunately, most residents say they're prepared. Well, we've been here 30 years. We know the drill. You, if you're not ready, then look out. Still, for some residents, the fire got a little too close for comfort. At last check, it was 20% contained. Multiple fire crews made quick work of a fire between Miramar and Santee Lakes. This one broke out around 2 o'clock this afternoon near the Sycamore landfill, burning about 15 acres. Crews attacked flames from both the air and the ground. Some also responded to spot fires east of Interstate 15 near Pomerado Road. MCAS Miramar crews earlier said containment was 50%, but updated that to only 25% tonight. The cause of this fire is still unknown. In southeastern San Diego, another fire burned about 90 acres about a mile north of the international border near Tecate. This one broke out late this afternoon in a remote part of Marin Valley. By 6 p.m., crews had stopped the fire spread. At last check, this one was 10 percent contained. The hot, dry conditions have been making things difficult for firefighters, but some relief is on the way in the way of our weather. Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis now joins us with a first look at your microclimate forecast and some good news, Carlene. 
Yes, Barbara Lee, finally getting some good news because all we really need is a modification of our air mass. It's been warm, it's been dry, and that has what, that's what's led to these fires popping up. So now we're going to change that in the forecast and taking a look at our in-house model. You're seeing a dip in the jet stream, so that's going to start to bring in some cooler air. Also an uptick in relative humidity values, which will be really good over the next couple of days, getting away from the dry and warm as well as windy conditions that we've had even with Santa Ana winds that picked up earlier this week. So we're already starting to have that modification of the air mass. You're seeing relative humidity values that are high. We haven't seen these in the past couple of days. We're at 93% for Del Mar, 81% for Poway, 77% currently for El Cajon, and that's going to continue to spread more so in towards the inland valleys as we hit the weekend forecast. So not as dry as it has been over the next couple of days. And then also talking about temperatures not being as hot as they have been over the past couple of days. We've been dealing with record heat well above average. By tomorrow, that onshore flow will knock our temperatures back into the seasonal range, and that's even going to spread towards the desert. So we are looking at some relief on the way and even more as we start the weekend. I'll have your complete forecast coming up. Back to you, Barbara Lee. All right, thanks, Carleen. Tonight, La Mesa police say two people are under arrest for looting during riots in La Mesa two weeks ago. Police say 25-year-old Ray Estrada Silva looted the Verizon store and the Target in the Grossmont Shopping Center the night of May 30th and was previously arrested but was out on bail. He was rearrested today on suspicion of also looting the Play It Again sports store. They also arrested 26-year-old Helen Tewold. She was accused of looting the Sally's Beauty store the same night. They are both charged with burglary during an emergency. Organizers of San Diego Pride say they need to see four steps taken before they'll allow San Diego law enforcement agencies to participate in this year's virtual event. Pride organizers are calling for SDPD to stop charging them for security and traffic enforcement and support police reform measures, among other changes. It is a step that folks can take and that our city could take immediately in order to produce harm reduction for black and brown communities. The San Diego Police Department responded in a statement to News 8 saying the department is, quote, disappointed with the decision, but will focus on reviewing recommendations brought forth to continually strengthen community partnerships. <laughs> The number of coronavirus cases in the county is nearing 9,000. Today, officials reported 161 new cases of COVID-19 out of nearly 5,000 tests performed. That's a positive rate of 3.2%, and that is just above the 14-day rolling average of 3.1%. 16% of all cases have required hospitalization. The total number of cases now stands at 8,998. Three additional deaths were reported today, bringing the death toll to 308. As more businesses are allowed to reopen tomorrow, Mayor Kevin Faulkner is looking forward to the next steps in coronavirus recovery. He says the city has set aside $85 million to help the local economy, including relief for small businesses and renters. The mayor also says local companies like UCSD Health, Scripps, and Inovio, to name a few, are hard at work right now trying to find a COVID-19 cure to hopefully bring an end to the pandemic. As schools across the country come up with plans to get students back on campus, including here in San Diego County, the Cajon Valley Union School District is planning a phased summer reopening. Parents have three options for in-person and hybrid instructions when classes resume August 19th, plus extended bus routes, smaller classes, and temperature checks for kids on arrival. We utilize a lot of outdoor education and more fre frequent uh, recess and recreation and really have a balance between wellness and, and learning. Cajon Valley is also holding a summer camp that starts on July 6th, and it says that students will be practicing social distancing in addition to other safety measures. A major rush for San Diego's hospitality industry tonight as hotels gear up to reopen their doors for the first time in three months. Tomorrow is opening day and rooms are booking up fast, but as News 8's Lamar Abrams shows us, Guests will notice some big changes due to strict county and state COVID guidelines. Well, you won't get full housekeeping service at your next hotel stay, but here at San Diego's Kona Kai Resort, the greatest luxury of all may be the peace of mind in knowing your room is cleaner than ever. I think most people will feel a little bit of apprehension once they hit the road for the first time and maybe enter into a hotel, but 
The idea is that with a few tweaks, we still want you to feel comfortable. A few tweaks, but Kona Kai Marketing Director Andrew Ladd promises a tempting post-lockdown getaway on Shelter Island. So it's extremely exciting. The changes begin at check-in. Yes. We will have guests unload their own lug luggage. No, you won't get to validate your car. Then the uh, greeted by our please wait here signs. So and guests will initially be required to keep that mask on. Oh, this is our tiki pool area. But the outdoors allow for, well, more breathing room. <laughs> At the pool, the tiki bar is surrounded by a white fence. Lounge chairs spaced out into singles and pods for families. And cleaning crews will be watching for the next opportunity to sanitize. Well, as soon as they get up to leave, will be you'll know, see our staff coming out to wipe everything down thoroughly. Lat says the resort is starting out with just about 20% of its staff and many of the workers are there to clean. One of their main focal points inside. Our housekeeping staff has gone through a rigorous training program. Room service will feel different too. The room service dropped outside your room. Rooms will no longer offer magazines or menus. It's all touchless right there on your television. But even with the modifications, the resort's first weekend back from a three-month closure looks promising. You're really left with leisure travelers that are coming into the area. Catering to staycationers, and that's exactly what San Diego's Tourism Authority predicted last month. Going forward, the invitation to others, whether you're a local or someone who just lives right outside of our county, there'll be happiness is calling you back. And if you do decide to book a stay, you may notice hotels are running great deals to get people to come, especially locals. All right, Lamore, thanks. The California Racing Board says horse racing at Del Mar can go on during the summer season. Del Mar's summer season starts on July 10th and runs through Labor Day, but you won't be allowed to go in person. You'll have to bet online or off track. No fans and no media will be allowed at the actual races. The Del Mar Thoroughbred Club says it hopes regulations will relax in time, however, to allow some fans to attend races in person before the end of the season.